Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for showing up here. It's why we can continue class every month. Oh, and more people are showing up. We're going to go through some questions from members from the month. These weren't urgent questions, but these were questions that came up. One was from Russ, and he wanted to know what, what explain more what WhatsApp is. But it's another app similar to it called Viber. I'll review that. I'll even show you that on the screen. Another member said, how do I check my Facebook security settings? You know, if you have a bank account, let's say Wells Fargo, you can go into your Wells Fargo account, check your security settings, make sure your phone number is up to date, your email is current, you have a good email in there, not the old maybe Pack Bell one, um, and be done with it. Maybe set two-factor authentication, which means when you sign into your quote-unquote Wells Fargo account, you have to get a code sent to your phone or another email address. Facebook is, uh, you know, a place a great place for communication all in one spot there's billions of users um but checking your security settings there for them or any social media that you participate in is a, a good spring cleaning tip our group is, does a project every year last year we did a password saver if anybody needs a copy of that we've given out oh like 40 or 50 of them it's an online password saver that's personal to you and you can start logging in and saving your passwords in an order keep them in one safe place this year, we're building a website. We're, it's called Tips for a Successful Retirement. And we'll talk about what's the point of building a website. We're building it in Google. It's free and it's easy. The concept is, if you have an event, let's say you're going to have a summer event, the family reunion, and then you have 10 videos, four, 14 pictures, and you want to get that to everyone. It's hard to send that via email. It's hard to disseminate that kind of information. It always stops, file too large. You can make a small, easy to put together website, as easy as getting onto a Zoom meeting. Have everything in one place, it's free. And then you can share that with whoever you want to. So they then have access to the pictures and the videos. You can even name it. So we're building this website. It's available to you in Google, anybody with a Gmail address, and uh, we'll review it further. Every month we talk about scams. We're in class right now, um, and let's take a look. I see 31 participants in class. I imagine 31 times 100. So there's a lot of people getting scammed as we speak. They're not listening to me. They're talking to a scammer. They answer to pop up on the screen, text, any kind of communication. I, it's such a widespread and successful business scamming people that you just know as you and I are talking, someone else is talking to someone else. So we'll talk with you about the, the scam of the month from their text, and other, we'll remind you and I'll nudge you and squeeze you about not responding to emails, clicking links you shouldn't, our monthly scam buster. We'll talk about smartphone updates. So your phone has updates. A lot of them come in around now, Apple and Android. Um, and so we will talk about those, how to find them. If you're going to be going around this spring and summer, and I sure hope you are, and you're bringing a device you can join tech class in wherever you are, you'll be using someone else's Wi-Fi. It'll maybe it'll be a hotel, maybe it'll be a cruise ship, maybe it'll be just a relative's home, maybe it'll be a lobby or an airplane or an airport. Um, how do you use that safely, and how do you disconnect safely when you're not using it any longer? We'll talk a little more about sending pictures and videos the easy way in Google Drive. If we get this far, we'll talk about your Wi-Fi bill. Check your Wi-Fi bill. That means if you're with Spectrum, Charter, you're out of state, you're using something else, it's good to get a look at that either online or on paper and check for things. They're sneaky. They'll give you ESPN for six months for free and start charging you 99 cents a month and it'll be hidden in there. So you want to keep an eye on that. Keep your tech clean. You're going to be outside trimming the lawn. So we'll talk about ways to keep your device clean. We always look for telemedicine tips. If anybody has that experience, that's growing. We'll play some tech Jeopardy and we'll talk about some May topics and have an open forum for questions. So here we go. Who knows what WhatsApp is? Who raise your hand if you know what WhatsApp is? Does anybody use WhatsApp? I see Wanda Collins uses it. Does let me take a step back. Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Does anybody use their text? Does anybody yes. use a basic text on their phone? All right. And that's attached to your phone. It's an app on your phone. And you can text back and forth and save things. Well, think about this. WhatsApp is 
Exactly that. It's an app. It's something you would download if you're an Apple user. All you Apple oh. users, raise your hand. Oh, look, those hands go up. Is there a militant those Apple users? They're like, look at me. I'm with Apple. All you Android users, raise your hand. We're sort of droopy because we're like hanging out, you know. So um, both in both instances, uh, whether you're an Apple user, the way you get an app, that's an application, one of those symbols on your screen is through the App Store. There's a little button on there called the App Store. In that app store, you can search for all sorts of things. You can look for online measuring tool, recipes, um, weight transformers, like anything that you want on there. And one of them is called WhatsApp. What WhatsApp is, it's an independent texting app, which means it's not connected to your phone company. It's only dependent on your Wi-Fi, whether your phone's connected to Wi-Fi or the cellular you're using, which means is the way your phone connects to the Wi-Fi when you're not at home. How this works and why it's so powerful is that if I have WhatsApp and I'm looking up at Michelin Slinkard and Michelin has WhatsApp and I am in Colorado and Michelin is in Beijing, we can chat with each other on WhatsApp. You're not using your phone service any longer and depending on, you know, your phone service ends when it leaves the United States for the most part, right? So if I go overseas, you have to have an international plan on your phone service to be able to continue to use your dial pad and your text. But when you use something like WhatsApp, you sign in, you, you give them that information. And then no matter if I'm, if I'm talking to George or Jeanette or Sylvia, wherever I am outside of the United States or from the United States to that place or back, there's no cost. It's free. It, I think it began in Asia and China. It's just a more affordable way to communicate overseas for business. And now it's a largely used um, social consumer application. Um, it's pretty safe, but it's as safe as anything on tech. You know, um, you always, whatever you put into a text, by the way, should always be measured. Remember, you're, it's like a mail. I remember putting the mail in the mailbox and forgetting and, or saying, I regret it. And like, it's too late. It went down the chute into the mailbox. Remember the tall buildings with those long mailbox chutes where you put it in, it would go down seven floors. Um, I was fascinated by that as a kid. I think I'm still fascinated by that. Um, nevertheless, that's what WAP is. Let me, what, what's, what WhatsApp is. Yeah, dub, let me, it's, I'm going to show you so you can see it. Let me share WhatsApp on an Android. So just take a moment and I'm, I'm going to show you what it is. It's an incredibly powerful tool. Let me join the meeting. Wanda, I see your hand. I'll get the questions in a moment. I want to do some of this magic here. It almost sounds like you're saying what's up. Well, I'm always uh, saying what's up to this group. But it's what, what? It's what's up. Exactly. Name what's up. But you say what's up on WhatsApp. Yeah. My father always says, what's up? I keep telling him, <laughs> what's <the> app? <laughs> I'm going to show it to you right now. Let me just let, admit myself. Yeah. FaceTime is only on Apple or? Um... Yes, FaceTime is an Apple, an Apple product. Exactly. So um, if you don't have Apple, then you can't FaceTime the other person, right? Right. It would be more complicated. Uh, it would be complicated. Oh. Yeah, to do it on an Android. Okay. Yeah, just a little, little bit more. So that's where we meet in the middle, where people use Zoom or Google Hangouts, different apps. Let me just, okay. What go. if you're on your cell phone and have Wi-Fi and it's not an Apple? Even, you know, uh, Wi-Fi is always necessary and or cellular, Miss Moore. And hello, Miss Moore. Um, hello. But FaceTime is a proprietary app made by the Apple company. So it won't work on an Android phone. And the rest of my family has mm -hmm. uh, the iPhone, so they do FaceTime, but I don't have right. it. So That's... I was at my father like I did this morning if I want to see him. So the middleman in all this is Google. Google has something called Google Meet, M-E-E-T. Oh. And it works on both the iPhone and the Android. 
Let's take a look over here. So there's the front of my screen. By the way, you notice how I have things in folders where it says news or SM or inbox and stuff. I do that to hide my applications. For example, if I open stuff, you'll see my banking. Yeah, right? Banking. So I don't want that just flat on the front of my screen. You know, like if guests come over, you want to sort of clean up their paperwork on the desk. Um, I put everything in. That's always a point. Anything sensitive, I put into a folder. But getting back to WhatsApp, I have WhatsApp where, right here. I think I call that one inbox because things are coming in. Now, do you see this is coming up, this symbol, the green one with a little fade, you know, the emoji with the phone in the middle? That's WhatsApp. That's what it should look like. If you wanted to take I, your, I can't your see the, that when you search for that app. I can't you, see the writing of it. I'll read that out loud. It is small. It is small. Sorry about that. Underneath that green picture, it's spelled W H A. T S, no apostrophe, then a capital A P P, all one word, WhatsApp. That's what it will picture will look like in the Apple App Store and the I on the pardon me, on the iPhone App Store or the Google Play Store. Then let me open it up. So when you first get it, you'll download it. It'll ask you for information, phone number. You know, these things are pretty invasive. They won't ask you for social security or any money or anything like that, but they'll ask you your date of birth and all of those things that we give away way too freely. Um, but let's see how it looks. It's very much like my text. I'm going to open. Yes, Belinda, that is correct. No, Belinda, you have W H A S. It's W H A T S and capital A P P. And no, there's no apostrophe. And it's one word. I want to show you something here. So this is, all right, there you go. That's WhatsApp right there. That's like my text. That's the front page of WhatsApp. I have. Um, uh, can you show us the icon, please? You want to see the icon again? Sure. Thank you. Do you see that green? Do you see in the middle there? It's green. I'll show you again in a moment in a bigger picture on a different share. This is on my phone. Um, um, Elijah, do you have a um, icon that you, I mean, a cursor that you can point to it just so that um, I know what it looks like, but maybe it. No, it's a good, it's a good suggestion. Let's see if I can get any annotation on here. I'm going to show you something, another way to look at this. Hold on one moment. Watch this. There you go. You see those images? The old time receiver on the green background. Mm -hmm. You see okay. that? Yes. That's the logo. Okay. And that's what you want to look for. Okay. Oh, it's all one word. It's all one word. Thank you. Can I make it bigger? Oh, look like look at that. <laughs> I learn tricks every day. Yes. What was the trick? Just I can Good. size my screen and it shows in the screen share. Oh. <laughs> Maximize, <laughs> minimize. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to the app. So if I show you here, you'll see my personal text. Let's see, don't use anything in there. Yes. Um, that's what my normal texts look like just the ones I deal with every day on my phone. But this is dependent on my phone number. This came back from okay, if I have WhatsApp on my phone and I have my phone in Asia, okay. Italy, wherever I am, I connect it to Wi-Fi wherever I am, then the phone will work. I'll go to WhatsApp and I can communicate. It's kind and, of clouded over by Brenda talking. Oh, hold on, let me see if I can... I can mute. She just muted herself. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks, Brenda. So several of these people are out of town, are, are out of the country. You know, they're not anywhere near here. So that's how I communicate with them. And then for some folks, they want to put D 
different subjects in WhatsApp. They don't want you to text them in their regular text. Like if we can keep everything in here. So I'm going to stop sharing over here uh, and close out of here and see if there's any questions on that. I see Wanda, you've had your hand up for a while. You there, Wanda, or or Betty Smith? And Wanda, okay. you can... Elijah, mm -hmm. what I heard about that app, uh, the people in foreign countries, they like to use the app because the conversation are not re recorded or they no, can't there's... track them. It's encrypted. It's, you know, it's encrypted. It's safer in many ways. But I think the big catch is that it's free and you just need to connect the Wi-Fi to use it, right? There's no, you can be any, you can talk to your person overseas in real time. It's just as fast as you and I are texting, nor, like from Glendale to, you know, Santa Monica per se, or anywhere in the country. But they, they could also use that app for a lot of fraudulent activities. Well, that was my next subject. We were going to start the Lasers Retirees online poker game. And we were going to use WhatsApp, Betty, if we can get it approved. But yes, of course, whenever you delve into digital toys, there, it, other people use it for nefarious things. From day one, from the first time you had an AOL dial-up, you know, the, from day one, the minute it became easy to do something from behind the wall, you know, like people just use it for things. But I do use it. Um, but also, I, I apply the rules I, I share here. I'm so, and I don't know where I got this, because in other areas of my life, I'm not so reserved, but online from the beginning, I've been very good at not over texting, not saying, you know, keeping it short and sweet, not putting politics in that case, like on social media or stepping out of that conversation. If it's occurring, you know, with some grace, um, trying not to lose too many friends. Um, but the concept is I've always used digital communications and known that it's a permanent print. It's a tattoo, you know? It's not like a piece, a letter you wrote and then tore up, you know, or you ripped out of the typewriter and then threw it away. So whatever you do, you certainly wouldn't send a credit card on there or there's other safe ways to do that. But it's a, gosh, Betty, it's used by, you know, hundreds of millions of people. Um, who remembers paying collect call chargers? Hello, this is your son, Paul. Uh, collect call from Paul, he's there. To Berkeley, hey mom, um, and then mom's on the other end. My grandmother's trick was you'd call collect, she'd hear my voice on the background, I'd sneak in, I'm here, and say, no, I'm not gonna accept the charges. But she knew I arrived at my location at school um, and didn't have to charge it. But we went from that to, to this, you know, you can communicate around the world very quickly. You can send a picture. You could send a picture of your grandkid to your family person in Mexico, you know, is it like Facebook? No, it's not social media. Facebook is a, is a different thing. You and I, it, all, all you can do is communicate, Betty. But both of you and I have to be members, have to join a WhatsApp. Okay. I see that Jeanette and Sylvia Santos and then Jeanette. Oh, um, my question, you said something. Hold on, about... Sylvia, I'll get to you. You're muted, Sylvia. Jeanette, you go. I'll get to you after Jeanette, Sylvia. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh... Okay, um, you 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 pointed out that you put all your banks under one folder um, called stuff, I think it was, and um, I was Ooh. wondering, is that just to, um, I mean, you said what it was, but is it kind of just to slow them down? Because if you, for my phone, an Android, if I pull up the screen, then you can see all the apps listed. So does that just yeah. slow them down? Is that what they're no, doing? No, no, no. I haven't noticed any slowing down. I mean, I mean, I, slow them down as far as knowing knowing which folder or where your bank apps are. No, I don't think so. I, I've never noticed. It's just one extra step and a way I can keep everything in, in, uh, in, in you know, in one place. I also don't want to have everything on my phone. It's open a lot, you know. You know, just even at the Ralph self checkout, it's open often. I'm like talking and scanning at the same time. Um, so, and I don't want somebody like, honestly, like I know that people will look at a nicer phone. If you open it up and you got like the Tesla app on there and your Goldman Sachs account app on there, like just, you don't want to advertise that, right? You would never advertise that before phones. All that data was kept safe in your wallet, your bag at home. And now you can just open it up and there's a camera on top of you. So I just think it's good to not flash the cash 
if you know what I mean, right? Like just keep, and plus you can make apps that say tools and you can have different things you use in there. You could have photo apps, you could have news. App. I have one that says news. So you don't have, you know, four or five news sources flash run. I open that one and say, which one am I going to go to now? I take a look at. That's my my sense, but I don't see any um, performance issues, Jeanette. Oh, that's not quite what I meant. I meant for um, somebody looking in your phone, I guess what you mean is that it's just not on the face of your phone when you um, turn it on. So, Pretty much, Jeanette, exactly. Yeah, okay, so um, still you would just kind of flip it up or, or um, scroll up and you could see your list of them. And you, yeah. you would just have to take some time to look through it to see um, where you're, what different apps you have. Okay. So, um, yeah, the other thing is who has pages of apps? You know, you can slide your phone to the right, to the right, to the right, and just have these right. and things that grandkids put on crazy, you know, crazy chocolate game or something, you know, and there it is from when they were three um, and you don't need, you know, a crazy farm game or just something you don't need. But even if it is something you need and you have to go to the fourth page to get it or you have to search for it, you can make that folder and put more things on that front page, right? So now I have, you know, stuff, which is my financial term. So now I don't have to search for the five, the four, you know, tools that I use from then. No, I'm going to get to Sylvia. Sylvia, please unmute yourself. And I can help you. Hi, is that similar to similar to Viber? Only it's only for business. Russ, you and Sylvia must be communicating overseas because Russ mentioned the same thing. Yes, Viber is the same tool. It's just a competitor. Oh, okay. So it's not only for business. It's not only for business. No. Oh, okay. It's for business. Okay. Thank I'm you. more familiar. You're welcome. But vibe, the word vibe, there's others out there too, by the way. There's a lot of competitors, but I believe for me, WhatsApp is like an, the standard for this kind of communication. It's good information. So I have my information in here. I have this set up in such a way that I have to get a text. So I'm going to say, send me a text message. I don't know what that means means I'm getting a second factor authentication. I signed oh. in with my email and password. I just got on my phone another code, which you will see right now. It's a one-time use code. It's no good after I use it. I'm going to submit my code. And only after I... What that means is do I want to skip that two-factor part, Jeanette, that I just did and not have to go through that again? I could say trust it. For now, I'll trust it because I clear my history weekly. So let's go say those. And now I'm in my, I'm going to click allow in my Facebook page. Nothing. Oh, it's National Siblings Day. So they popped a picture of me and my brothers up. So now I'm in Facebook pretty much. I'm just going to see things, you know, just there's nothing exciting on my page. Um, and so we're going to see things. But now I'm in my page. Let's talk about my account. There's my little avatar. George, same thing as... In Zoom, I get to go into the account and put a little picture in there. And now I'm going to go over to here to settings and privacy. I'm going to go over here to settings. And I'm just going to look through a few things. And over here, I'm going to see password and security. And this, by the way, so let's go to, to, to senior class here. It's, it's interesting, none of this was planned. So Facebook, we know, but Facebook is owned by a company called Meta. Maybe you see that little logo on the left there, right here, Meta. They became another company and one of its products is Facebook. Another you know product of Meta is called Instagram. I'm gonna go to password and security. So now these are different organizations I manage as a computer shop, but over here, there's a button that says password and security. Over here is where I can update my password. Always a good idea. Over here is where I can set that two-factor authentication, which means I can choose any account and add a phone number. So I get a second message. This is another interesting thing. I can go, where am I logged in? I know that I'm logged in uh, on my computer, on my phone, and a couple of other devices. And I know that's to be true. But if you saw your set up on a phone that's not yours 
you'd want to clean that up. And they have a nice tool called the security checkup. And you can go through the security checkup. It'll go through your name and different different tools. Maybe it's not going to load because I am in a secure meeting here. It's not going to show that. But yeah. inside of here is where you can go through these settings. And I, you can't do it enough. By the way, going back here, this is something you can do in any account. So if I go, I'm not going to go to another account, but you can see I'm just going to use Wells Fargo. I can sign into my account. And then there'll be the same option to go through my security settings. I can go to any, I can go to Amazon um, per se. And there'll be, I'll open up my Amazon. If I sign in, there'll be my name and I'll be able to go to the security settings. These are really helpful things to do. Social media to me is, is a good one to keep an eye on. Of course, that brings us back to the age old question of who saves their passwords, who has their Facebook password. So who uses Facebook again? Let's get a little thing. We can be friends. We can be Facebook friends. I want to be invited to the family pictures, Miss Moore. Um, so if I asked you, could you find your <laughs> password? If I said to you, could you, you know, hey, um, I'm going to pick somebody out from the crowd, just like in school. If I was going to say Joyce's iPad, did you bring your Facebook password to class today? Like the assignment said? Could you find it like quickly enough? Okay, so did, you're going to detention. And because you got that wrong, Joyce has to buy pizza for everybody in class today. We'll be sending the orders out shortly. But yeah, so that's a, obviously a common thing for everybody. You might know you're really important to the money and the healthcare, like that's something you might have in your head or that's important. But Facebook, if somebody, if you can't get in one day, that's a bummer, questions. Yeah, who does and do ooh, scam busters. I got a good scam bust. So who gets scams on their email? Just obvious, crazy scams. Where the, It's just so obvious that it's not coming from, you know, PayPal. Who gets phone calls? Those crazy phone calls. Maybe mm -hmm. especially on the ones, especially on the ones that like the home digital line that you get with your cable, you know, um, but scam phone calls come in. Who I now get gets, a lot. I've been getting a lot of calls about social security. Of course you are, that you're the target market for that. You're the target <laughs> market for that. I hope that you're ignoring those and that if you- Oh yeah, I hang up on them. I say I already have it taken care of and just hang up. I don't want you to even talk to them anymore. I don't want them to capture your voice. They'll record that as a voice. Oh, okay. I want you to ignore that. They are just scammers. It's like a salesman that puts their foot in the door to get started, the old foot in the door action. Um, I want to show you one that's been coming in around is on, I get these texts and it looks like this. Do you see that? Or it just has a number on the top and then says, Hey, on the bottom. I can't see the number because uh, share. Oh, there it is. I don't know that number. And it just says, Hey, anybody get any texts like that from just people that yeah. Just random yes. text that are just saying hey. I did. I sure did. Wait, that was me, Betty. And you never answered and I hurt my feelings. I didn't. I didn't, didn't respond. And my feelings were hurt a lot. And I'm still, <laughs> but anyway, smart move. Um, so why do you think they're sending you those? Like, what's the point of that? What are they trying to get from you? Because they want you to reply back to be to start up a conversation. What else? Your voice. Well, if it's a text, it's not voice yet, but that's a good guess on a phone call. There's uh, your Betty's right, but there's another thing they want to find out. But they want to get your phone number, your uh, reply number. Partially, there's still one more, our lasers detective group. They want to know if it's a good number. That if ah, that's... who said that? Who said that? I did. Miss Moore, our, our resident retired detective from the LAPD. Um, mm -hmm. Admin, not a detective. New thing going on at the doctor's offices uh, where you do self, um, or like a self check-in before <laughs> you get there. And then they want you to pay and all of that. And so I had a doctor's appointment um, the other day and they sent me a, a link that, you know, to sign on and check in. And I didn't do it. I just waited till I got there and let them do it. But, you know, I want to know, should we do that? So 
that's an interesting thing. I my Kaiser experience. I go to Kaiser now, blood work, whatever I have to go for. I get that text. And do you want a pre-check in? Uh, yeah. So it's never that busy. I've done it where I've gone on there. I've answered the questions. Have you had any symptoms? You know, all those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I've even, I have my credit card is saved in Kaiser because I have a monthly, my premium gets paid. So if I want to pay the copay, right? right.